Good evening, my beautiful internet friends. Welcome back. I'm very excited to bring you this video today. It has been a while in the making, but first, I just wanna say I just I just got this hoodie in the mail from Amazon. It was $20 and I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, I'm just really feeling it. As you may know, a few months ago, I went down to Texas for the Amputee Coalition Conference. It was a fantastic experience. It was humbling, it was challenging, it was mind-opening among many other things, but the coolest experience I had there was being able to meet Chris Oliver from The Amped Life. This is a YouTube channel that I followed since before I actually had my amputation. He has fantastic information and is a really fantastic person. We got to have a number of conversations over coffee, including this conversation, which I'm really excited to bring you guys into today. There are a number of things that he said during this conversation that you are about to witness that have stuck with me about depression, about the evolution of dealing with such a significant life change, and it was an honor. So Chris, thank you so much for being on my channel, and without further ado, let's travel back in time a couple months ago to the Amputee Coalition with Chris Oliver in Texas. Well, hello, my beautiful internet friends. I am here at the Amputee Coalition in San Antonio, Texas, and I finally got to meet Chris from The Amped Life, which is a YouTube channel that I have followed since before I had my leg amputated. It's actually one of the big reasons I came to the conference to be able to meet him and other amputees that I've known uh, just you know, from the virtual world. And so we got a chance to sit down and actually talk. But one of the things I wanted to begin to discuss is how important uh, support is. We were chatting about that yesterday and I feel like a lot of the people at the conference have sort of referenced that, especially in yeah. the opening ceremonies. Yes, I think, I mean, I can, I can talk from my perspective, yeah. my experience about support. Uh, at some point, I think we realized we, uh, I was a kind of a help rejecting um, person, and that got me into so much trouble. That it, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it extended, I mean, it caused so many secondary, secondary issues and secondary uh, problems beyond the, 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 the injury and the, and the amputation. Yeah, so, so I've generally learned over time that, um, for me anyway, a sign of my emotional and uh, mental well-being is how I cope with reality. And um, in the past, I've done a number of different things, and we've touched on all of them. But I've, I've either I've, I've blamed uh, external circumstances for for where I found myself, so blaming others. Um, I've also done a bit of taking it on too much on myself. It's all my fault, or like this, is, like poor me, or just it's internalized. Yeah, some of that. Yeah. But I think a bit more of um, I'm overly responsible for situations. Yeah. So. Um, wanting to take responsible for the emotions of others. Oh, yeah. um, so when they're sad, it's because of me, or as opposed to it's okay for them to be, to be sad or to be empathetic to a, to a situation. And I think that right. kind of what I had to ask myself is how, how would you have responded in, in a situation like that? Would you, have, um, um, would you have found it a burden to help someone else or would you have liked them to accept the help? Yes. <laughs> so, um, and then, then I, the one I did a lot of was to run, was to avoid, and I did that yeah. in various various ways, which is to use, um, at one point, alcohol to, to avoid, to, to numb what was going on. Oh, yeah. Um, abuse, something I've spoken about on the channel, which is to abuse um, pain medication, which is also a way of getting out of reality. Yeah. And then the fourth one, which is, I think, well, certainly something, I, a point I came to, and a, and a point you came to, which is to ask for help, and I think more importantly, to, to accept help, to let people, <laughs> Help me, which which is something we both struggle with at some yes, point. Yes, I think I think that's I, I think it's interesting that you make that distinction too, because in my head sometimes I equate like, well, if I ask for help, like if I'm going to an appointment or what, if I'm reaching out, then I, I've checked that box and I'm good, I'm yeah. done. You know, the follow through doesn't necessarily connect in my head that you. Yeah you really have to accept that. Like you have to open yourself up and be vulnerable and follow through with it and not just throw a need out there and then be done with it. Yeah, yeah. And vulnerability is the, was, was the big one. Yes. <laughs> I think another big obstacle was, and I, it's, a, it's something I fed into is people saying, um, oh, you're so strong and you're dealing with this so well. And meanwhile, you know, I mean, I wasn't, I really wasn't. Yeah. And I fed into that and I felt it was creating a new identity after the accident. Um, which is the strong guy, the guy, who, who, the person who could cope with everything. Yes. When in fact that wasn't true and it was a very self-destructive thing to, to do, position to take. Getting to the point where I became vulnerable enough to say, I need help, please help me. Yeah. And then when people offered and stepped into is to, is to go thank you and to accept the help. Yeah. Which I always felt indebted to people, as I said earlier, is to think we, I would have done the same for them or for anyone else. Why 100%. Am I, yeah. yeah. No, that's so that true. It feels amazing when we get to help people. Like I, it is so 
I think it's a beautiful process when yeah. you can actually fulfill a need for someone or when someone shares something with you and you yeah. can you can help them, like you can fill that void or you can come alongside someone. It feels like it gives you purpose. And yeah. and I deny I know that I deny people that so often when I'm like, No, I can like I've got it, I, I'm doing it or whatever and I try to be overly yeah. independent or I try to do things that I can't actually do that I'm really taking I'm like taking something away from them. I'm stopping yeah. a process that could actually be beautiful for both of us. For both, and I think that's yeah. important is is denying both both sides. The, yeah. the, the, the person needing help as well as the one offering the help and also needing the help at the same time. Yeah. And something else we spoke about, which is um, it helps me in my own process, is to, is to share and to yeah. hear and see the feedback from people and to feel that sense that for, uh, I made so many mistakes after the amputation and to be able to assist somebody to, to get to the process of where I feel I've gotten to sooner um, is why I deny them that opportunity and then something the yeah. word use the word meaning yeah uh, is to find meaning in that in that struggle that I had by by sharing it and I think by finding meaning in the, in the suffering of the struggle yeah. it, it alleviated some of the um, the anxiety and some of the the uh, yeah, the, the despair, the distress of... Because it can start to feel so, I mean, like, I think it can be completely empty and hopeless, or you can choose to find purpose and choose to find meaning in different yeah. things. Yeah, And yeah. I, a moment ago, you talked about, you know, kind of, I almost think of it as constructing the persona, like the strong guy, or, yeah. or whatever, because people tell you you're doing so well with it, or, or whatever, and that's something I've absolutely dealt with when people tell you you're inspirational, yeah. or you're, you know, fill in the blank. How did you deal with breaking that down or actually like coming out of that? Because I find that really difficult to do sometimes. Yeah. When people have this vision of you and you're like, that's actually not what's going no. on. It's no. hard to do. And as we're, as we're talking, I realized now that I, I was a liar because I wasn't coping. I was right. lying to people. Yeah, no, I've, I've been there too. Yeah. And um, I, well, to answer your question is how, how did it change is I hit a wall. I had to hit some sort of a wall and it became incredibly self-destructive. Yeah. Um, and and um, that awful sense of I knew what I was doing. I knew it's not how I want to live. Um, and that awful sense of self betrayal is is uh, and and I mean I became in incredibly self destructive. Yeah. And uh, that aw awful sense that I had of self betrayal is 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 this who you are or is this it? Is this is this what life is going to be about? Yeah. Um, are you going to be uh, are you going to be living a lie, or are you going to become authentic, or um, are you going to be running and hiding and, and um, be, be lying to yourself and to and to others? So, yeah, to answer your questions, I hit a wall. I had a crisis, and the crisis forced me to reassess my my position, or face death, really, right. essentially, emotional yeah. and physical. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Self betrayal is is a phrase I don't think I've ever actually heard before, but that is that resonates. I mean, that's so true and so real. Yeah. I mean, we think of betraying other people so often, but I've never really thought of, like, when we get self-destructive and all of that, it's really betraying ourselves and who we actually are or could be. Yeah, and it's, who we could be. I think it's really yeah. important. It's not to say that I think I have something huge to contribute, but I, but I do think in, in what we've learned, uh, there is something to share. But the sense of self-betrayal, I remember driving one day, and I've become quite emotional when I talk about it, but yeah. through all of this, um, this um, lying by omission, really, so I wasn't yeah. overtly lying, but, but not disclosing what was really going on, and by allowing people to think that I was okay, I, I mean, that is living a lie, but driving one day, and I, I think I told you about this, but, yeah. and, and listening to a song, a Bob Seger song called Like a Rock, and, and this was me trying to be like a rock, when, when deep down I was, I was losing time. Um, and, and that recurring thought of, is, is this it, is this who you're going to be, and uh, uh, what you've become, and being extremely hard on myself too, but, um, and then realizing, but I don't want to be stuck in a room um, experiencing a, a sense of darkness, when I did believe that there was nothing in an egotistical way, but in a, yeah. in a positive way, that there, there's got to be more to who I am, than, yeah. uh, than an avoidance is. Did you, did you at, any, at any point experience it, that um, you're being inauthentic? Or, because I remember when you started, you became so vulnerable so early on. And that is, yeah. I had so much respect for your ability to do that. In a way, it inspired me to do the same. In fact, <laughs> shortly after you made a, 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 I can't remember which video, but Joe made a, made a video and I, um, I was driving. I was doing a long trip. And for some reason, I was feeling terribly down. Yeah. And I got home, and there was no one there, and I unpacked my gear, and I made a video on, on depression. 
and really? um, and saying that it's okay to feel depressed and that you could be grateful and depressed at the same time. And I used to confuse so, those issues. Yeah, yeah. I used to think that it's a, a, a depression shows a lack of gratitude. It's like, oh, I can be depressed because after so much all, to be thankful for. Exactly. Like all, yeah, right, right. All those cliche sayings we hear. Yeah. And to separate those issues, and I, and I think maybe it's something. If you're struggling with, with, with those kind of thoughts, is to separate those issues and to go, but it's okay to feel down and at the same time feel um, grateful for other aspects of my life. But if I don't acknowledge yeah. the, depress the depression side of things, um, I'm going, I did, I crashed. That's such an important distinction to make, and I'm so glad that, you, that you're talking about that stuff, because more, I mean, more people need to. We don't hear that. We just hear the, like, have a gratitude journal or like just be more thankful for yeah, everything and, yeah. and all of that and that's such a beautiful message because it's true it's part of being human you know like the all a necessary of it. <laughs> part yeah i don't think it's sustainable yeah. to do anything else no. i think i could i tried i did the shred thing for a while but yes. but it, it worked out so badly and there's a book called the power of positive thinking and yes maybe there's a i don't know maybe maybe it works for some i don't want to um um suggest that the way i see it that, of course it won't work for everyone but it didn't work for me. It's yes. the idea of, yeah, you're, you know, look in the mirror and say, look at you, yeah. you're so cool. You're a badass. <laughs> <laughs> just, just say it 20 times and you'll yes. believe it and, and your life will be, be great. Yeah. And well, yeah. How did that work out? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I, in one of my blogs, I spoke about um, losing my leg, having a positive impact on my life too. Yeah. And um, maybe at one point I pushed it quite far. I said that it's possibly the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. And a part of that is true because it forced me to confront aspects of my life which I don't think I would have confronted if I hadn't faced the crisis which was the the accident and and a subsequent disability. Right. And how I think about it is if I had to and, and we spoke about that being becoming a more self-aware that that was my sense is that I became more self-aware through crisis. Yes. But um, and and I got to the point where I realized look I wouldn't exchange the self-awareness for having my limb back. It yeah. was, and, and that's quite a, a big statement to make, I think. You know, it's so funny. I, I forget, it. I may have talked about this before or not, but I, when I actually, before I had my amputation, I went to a number of, well, I talked to a number of people in person, and then I also wrote to like a couple online amputee support groups, like on Facebook, that had mm. thousands of people. And so many people, wrote back, uh, the majority of the comments were really, really, really positive. And so many people said, this was the best thing that ever happened to me, or the best decision I ever made, if it was something that had to be decided on. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is you know so cool. And so, I, I, I mean, not based on that, but based on so many other factors, I went ahead and made that decision. Mm -hmm. And over the last nine months, I just personally, that's a statement. <laughs> I hope that one day that's a statement that I can make, yeah, but I very, yeah. can't yet. And I think it's a very, um, I think yet is a really powerful word. I can't yet. I mean, I can't say that I'm, that yeah. this is like the best thing that's ever happened or that I wouldn't exchange it for anything because, because it is really hard and I am trying to figure it out. But at the same time, I think that self-awareness and having opportunities that allow us to reflect on who we really are and push us in those ways are more valuable than just about anything that I can think of. Yeah. And yeah. also some of the most painful things. Yeah. You've made a very important use the yet word. And I agree, I, 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 as you spoke, I was thinking, would I have made a statement like this five mm -hmm. years ago? Yeah, and I've suddenly I, realized I wonder. I would never have done that. Okay. I would never have, I would have, I would have taken my leg back yeah. in the years of struggle um, with infection and pain um, any day out of any yeah. form of perceived self-awareness or um, so so that's a very important point and something I, I really haven't thought about yeah. um, is that has come about over the last year that that's, thinking and that's really cool that that's been a recent thing for yes. you I'm excited for you for that because I yeah. think that's a I would imagine there's some peace in that or or something yeah yes as I said earlier I think that, that certain things have happened and as a result of that, the, the despair of becoming an amputee yes. has, has lifted. My experience is that, that I'm a happier, more joyful person, and that it's come about as a result of, um, by doing what we're doing right now, mm -hmm. is finding it, it, that my life's become more meaningful, which is to, to hopefully pass on something yes. to, to you guys, um, that'll help you. 
Um, also, to, to my life has got a bit more purpose. Yeah. And it's, it's not all about being an amputee, there's a lot more to it. Uh, it's got to do with being um, a husband and a dad and, and uh, uh, doing the job that I do. Um, and, and thirdly, I think I've been able to acknowledge love. So love was always yeah, a, yeah. A, like, I just didn't, you know, I kind of knew what I was, but I also didn't. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I, for, I, thinking about it, kind of taking love and a sense of purpose and, and, and finding some meaning and putting that together has made me a happier, a happier person. I think we live, um, at least the society that, you know, that, that I've experienced, there's a lot of emphasis on like, you know, me and, and a, like a personal journey and all of that. And the more that I experience anything, especially anything kind of traumatic or negative or like extreme or unexpected, the more I realize that I like, we are meant to be together. Like yeah. people are meant to be together. We're meant to be connected. And if you don't have that, life is agony. Like yeah. if you don't have support, if you feel isolated, it is just unsustainable. If I think back in at the, at the, at the point where I, be, I became addicted to, um, I needed substances to cope, and I, I, I kind of started hating the idea of needing a crutch, <laughs> literally right. figuratively, yeah. <laughs> to, to cope. But yes. um, incredibly isolated, and, and even though I might yeah. have had a sense of that communicating with people um, was being connected, that wasn't true. I wasn't really connected. I was, but um, that that once the connection came, the the love started happening. And yes. So, so yeah, I think connectedness is the opposite of a lot of things, of unhappiness, of depression, of addiction. I yeah, experienced that. That's so true. And I think, I don't know what your experience has been, but I think to actually experience support or connection, kind of going back to the beginning of our conversation, you have to, maybe not even put into words, but you have to ask for help. You have to open yeah. yourself up. You have to be vulnerable to some extent. Because yeah. otherwise, like, you can't get past the surface with yourself. And I spent so many years living in that. Yeah. I mean, I spent the first like 22 years of my life existing in that plane of like, just just surface with everything. Like I could support other people, I could, you know, whatever, but I never let anyone get past like, you know, skin deep. And mm. that was so isolating and so alone, even though I had so many friends, I had so many people around me and all mm. of that, there was no true connection. And I. I felt like slow death in a way, you know, once stuff actually started happening. And Do you know why you did that? Uh, I think it was uh, self-protection in a way. From? Oh, good question. Um, I'm going to test you. Yeah, no, no, it's a good, it's a good question though. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get into trouble with your viewers if I give you a hard time, so... Sorry, yeah. yeah, I think it's, it, it was self-protection. You know, if I didn't let anyone near who I really was, and I also didn't know who I really was, so I didn't have to know who I really was. It, it yeah. allowed me to avoid any kind of self-awareness or self-reflection. Or vulnerability. Or vulnerability with myself or other people. I think it was very much both. It wasn't just yeah. about other people. It was about yeah. I didn't want to go into anything that I was really feeling or really experiencing, and so yeah. I stayed service with myself, too. Yeah. Which yeah. I think was probably the biggest thing, even though it reflected in other people. Yeah. You know, I didn't let them get close, but I didn't let myself get close to myself either. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that, um, yeah, getting close to myself was, and it was fear for me. It was just fear. While we're talking, it's quite arrogant. For, of, it was quite arrogant of me to think that I didn't need you, you or you or other people in my life to. I mean, it, it would suggest that I'm limitless, which obviously I'm yes. not. But, oh, yeah, um, right? <laughs> it's quite an arrogant position to take, as I can solve things. Also, having to acknowledge that I have limitations, that there are certain things I just cannot cope with. And for as long as I thought I could, um, things went really badly and, and came to a, to, a, yeah, very, to a crisis. If someone is, which I think we probably all are to some extent, but if someone is scared of vulnerability, I mean, that's something that you... I've experienced and it's something mm. that you experience not just with people in your life but also online. What is something that you would impart to someone who wants to be more vulnerable or wants to take like the first step towards right. that? I think two things. For me the, f the, the first thing is I was concerned if I became vulnerable it would become an avalanche of not coping with anything, oh, yeah. and things would start falling apart, that I had to hold on to the known, uh, that I feared what would what would be on the other side? Because I hadn't, I hadn't seen it in my family of origin either. It was, it was yeah. all about. I mean, we grew up in quite a conservative environment, where it was all about, you know, you have to be able to to cope with things. Um, is the one. The other thing I would would suggest is, it's the risk of vulnerability versus the risk of of perceived toughness. If I yeah. can put it that way, 
either way you're going to take a risk. So whilst I was um, busy with the risk of, of thinking I could cope, um, there was no no potential for change or for a good outcome. Yeah. And when I realized that I had to take a risk to become vulnerable and at least then there would be an opportunity for things to be to be different. Yeah, it's a matter of the what is the alternative to becoming vulnerable? Yes. It's more of the same or, or yeah, what 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 would it have been for you? Oh, I think I think I mean I first of all I think that's such that's such a good answer and that is kind of what comes to mind first for me too that it's almost um, not not at all what other choice do you have, because I think we always have choices when it comes to ourselves. Yeah. You know, like I internally, we always have choices, but if you want to move forward, you have to take a risk. Like if you want to progress with yourself or with anything, mm -hmm. there is going to be risk. Mm -hmm. And I think to some extent you have to make peace with that risk. You have to make mm -hmm. peace with the fact that yeah, someone might not be okay with your vulnerability. Someone might not take it well. Someone might yeah. say something that's not great and that's going to hurt, but it's also, it also doesn't have to destroy you. Like you can move on to the next person or you can find help in a different avenue and the world's a really big place. Yeah, yeah. I found myself asking, I got to the point where I became self-assured enough at some stage, and, and it's, it's fleeting at times, but where I could say, if somebody has a problem with my vulnerability, does it say something about me? Or is it, is it more about a, a, yes. a place where another person is not a judgmental statement, it's just a, um, it's helped me to say, what does this say, something about where I'm at or where the other person's at? And it, it's, it's not good or bad or anything, it's just yeah. a statement of fact. Is, um, and, and, and I think generally I've come to the point to where I'm able to reality test such a question and go, well, it's one of two things, I need to change or take a step back from the other per person's yes. perspective yeah. um, to protect myself. Oh, and I think, that's, I think that's exactly it. I think it's taken me a while to get there, and like you said, it's fleeting sometimes. Some, yeah. Like the, the whole being yeah. self-assured enough to be like, well, this actually isn't about me. Like, yeah. you know, if they're uncomfortable, I mean, to evaluate, you know, either, either I did something wrong in this situation or whatever, but if that's not the case, then it's really not about me because not everyone's comfortable with vulnerability. Not everyone's yeah. comfortable with, you know, fill in the blank. And so yeah. if they have a negative reaction, I feel like I see that a lot with comments that I That's get online. That's exactly. That was going to be my yes. next question is yeah. how do you deal with it? Because, yeah. uh, <laughs> if, I mean, not a lot. The overwhelming amount of comments are really cool yeah. and supportive. Um, but but there have been a few comments that I've thought, whoa, that's not okay. Yeah. Not cool at all. How do you, how do you deal with that? Yeah, yeah, because I'm sure we've we both gotten that, and I've gotten my fair share of people just saying things that are so far out of left field or so intentionally mean. You know, you they're just trying to hurt you or yeah. whatever. And um, for a while, it would get to me on the things that I was insecure on, like on stuff that I didn't on stuff that was like whatever, I was secure on that, I was like, eh, whatever, they're just being dumb or whatever, but stuff I was insecure on, like when I first started making videos, um, and it sort of blew up a little bit, so many people were like, you're such an idiot for making this decision, and that was something I was still, like, in the midst of being in so much pain, yeah. I was still healing, I was still, like, trying to adjust to things in the first two or three months, and everyone yeah. was like, God, you're such an idiot, like, your leg was perfectly fine, like, saying all kinds of stuff where... I knew, realistically, they didn't have any basis for understanding my whole story. Yeah. But even that comment, like, hurt to hear because I was still kind of like, am I an idiot? Like, <laughs> whatever. But as I um, started to, like, engage with some people, like, I remember one comment in particular where someone took, I think it was about three or four paragraphs to explain in great detail what psychological ailments I had, how I was so messed up in these different ways, and how the reason I cut my leg off is because I hated myself and I had God, that's uh, so rough. body. <laughs> yes, body. I haven't <laughs> seen that, but but that is so rough. Yeah, that that uh, that I had um, body integrity identity disorder was was their thing, which is basically where you feel like a part of your body isn't yours. And they took a long time to like detail this out, and it was also from a place. It wasn't like a hey, I think you might want to see someone about this. It was mm. like a like you're effed up, and here's yeah. why. And so I, I looked at that, and I took a second, and I was like, and so I responded as compassionately as I could, saying like, 
thanks for the feedback, which is kind of like a, which kind of helps, me. saying like thanks for the feedback on something that isn't great feedback kind of helps me set my mindset like, okay, cool, that's your opinion, yeah. but then I, I just try to engage with them and be like, I'm curious why you think that, like, <laughs> you're welcome to respond, and they actually yeah. did, and they, and they talked about their own family history and how they lost their mother to that, and I was like, oh, this has absolutely nothing to do with me. Yeah. This is, this is deep pain in their life that yeah. is just directed in my direction because it yeah. happens to remind them of trauma in their own past. Un unresolved stuff, probably. Yeah. Exactly, and so that and a couple other times where that's where similar things have happened where I've tried to engage with someone, and the response has has indicated something in their own story has made it a lot easier to receive when people are, are just not being kind. I realize yeah. that actually probably not about me. We covered a lot of topics. We have. <laughs> we kind of zigzagged all over the place. Yeah. I like it. Oh, that was good. And I hope it was useful for for you guys. Okay. okay. All right. Catch you guys in the next one. <laughs> Ciao. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. I know that sometimes the longer form conversations aren't really everybody's cup of tea, but I love them. And it was really sincerely an honor to sit and to talk with Chris and learn a little bit more about him. I can't encourage you strongly enough to please go check out and subscribe to his channel if for no other reason than a personal favor to me. And you will find that his content is fantastic. Thanks guys for listening. Thank you to my patrons for making these videos possible. I love that you spent a few minutes out of your day here hanging out with me. I love you guys. I'm thinking of you and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.